Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video and in this video we'll be talking about the first five things you should do after downloading Affinity Designer on your iPad. These are the first five things I wish I knew when I first started and once you know them it should take you from not knowing how to use the app to creating your first design using Affinity Designer. But if this is your first time here, my name is John, I am a logo and brand identity system designer and I also create this cool YouTube videos where I share my design journey. So now that we know each other, let's jump straight into number one, what is Affinity Designer? If you just downloaded Affinity Designer from the App Store, looking to diversify your design toolkit, I think it's very important to know what Affinity Designer is and what it's used for. So Affinity Designer is designed to be a vector graphics editor that also allows you to play with raster brushes and raster retouching and is doing that in a very quick way by switching through personas and personas is our second item on the list but before we go there a quickly reminder to go down below and like the video and subscribe you know 90% of you guys that are watching my videos are not actually subscribed so do me a favor support the creator and the channel by go down below and subscribing and liking this video right so number two personas Personas are a really quick way to switch between different workspaces. So you have your designer persona, which is the first persona, the default persona of Affinity Designer, which allows you to work with vectors. And then you have your pixel persona, which allows you to work with raster brushes, uh, raster photo retouching, and other raster tools. And then there's the export persona, which allows you to quickly export slices of your work. So let's quickly switch angles and show you how this all works. Right, here we are in Affinity Designer in a new document and it's time to see how the personas work. So if you look up here in the corner, there's three buttons which allow us to quickly switch between the different personas. The first one is a designer persona, which allows you to quickly create vectors and play with them. The second one is the raster persona, which allows you to use raster brushes. And the third one is the export persona, which allows you to take slices of your work and export them. Right, so now that you understand what affinity is, how it works and how the persona work, Let's show you how you create your document and your artboard so you can start creating your work. So if we go on the plus button right here in the right hand corner, in the upper right hand corner, you can see you got different documents that you can create. For now, we'll stick with new document. Here you got your different presets. Here you got your preset selector. So let's go with iPad 11 inch right here. Here you can select between pixel, points, inches, feet, yards, millimeters, centimeters, and meters. We'll stick with pixels. And let's select our DPI here to go to 300. So you can see just by scrubbing up and down on this, I can select my DPI. And then by clicking on it, I can, I can type in my exact DPI that I want to use. So let's stick with 300 for now. Right, now that we got our document, let's create a quick shape and show you how this document works. So, so far, we can create shapes. But you can see as soon as we move them outside the document, we can actually see them anymore. Even if I change the color to white, you still can't see it because it's outside of the document. So how do we create our boards to work with? And if you're, if it's the first time you're in the software, you'll see that the our boards are not that easy to find. So if we go up here, here's our, our, our art boards and up down here, there's a second menu, which opened up and it gives you your presets. So let's go to iPad 11 inch and create our artboard. And this is a better way to create artboard. And then you can just create three artboards. And with the move tool, you can quickly duplicate them if you prefer to do it this way and have multiple artboards that you can move your artwork around on. Right, so that's our third item on the list done. Let's move over to our fourth, which is understanding how the tools work in order to start creating your artwork. So on the left, we got our first toolbox here. And then on the right, we got even more tools that we can use. So let's start on the left and show you the move tool. The move tool just allows you to select different parts of your work and move them around as you prefer to. Then we got our node tool, which if we create a shape down here and then take that to curves, you can see our node tool allows us to select individual nodes and move them around as we please, like so. Then we got our point transform tool, which allows us to to transform our shape around the center. Contour tool, which allows us to put a contour on our shape or take some away. Corner tool, which allows us to round the corners of our shape, like so. Pencil tool, which allows us to freehand paths. Vector brush tool, which is a selection of vector brushes. Pen tool, which works exactly as on a computer. 
fill tool, which allows us to create gradient, transparency tool, which allows us to create transparency gradient, vector crop tool, which allows us to crop vectors without having to rasterize them, and then our shapes, squares, ellipses, etc. Text tools, frame text, same as any sort of, sort of software, allows you to put in text. And then what I like even more than that is our artistic text tool, which allows us to create a path and then paste our text on it like so. And then last but not least, it's our eyedropper tool, which allows us to select a color and apply it to our shape or selection. Cool, so that's our whole toolbox on the left. And then right underneath that, we got our deselection tool, which allows us to deselect our current selection like so our snapping on and off and our delete button which allows us to delete our selection awesome so let's clean our canvas here get rid of all the rubbish and move on to our right side here so starting with our color picker let's create a shape and select any color that we want and this also allows you to to select the color of your stroke which the stroke is the next button down and this just allows you to select the stroke size for your object or just take it off like so or add fancy strokes in underneath that we got our vector brushes we touched earlier on them we're not going to go in detail layers appearance which shows you the stroke color and the fill assets stock photography which i don't really use symbols effects and adjustments we will touch on them in more detail in a future video so make sure you subscribe our text tool transform which allows us to rotate order mirror change the dimensions positions x y and rotation and shear then we got our navigator and our history and last but not least up here in the corner next to our personas we got two more menus we have more advanced settings like the fill mode, insertion targets, operations, geometry, and the clipboard. Right, so now we know how to create our documents, we know what affinity is, how the personas work, and how our tools work. Let's move on to our last one, number five, gestures. Gestures are like the keyboard shortcuts of, you know, a tablet software. So, first of all, as you can see, two fingers on the canvas, two fingers on the canvas, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, okay? Two fingers on the canvas allows you to move around. And then you pinch to zoom, like so. Two fingers tap, it's undo. Three fingers tap, it's redo. And then the rest of the really important gestures are dependent on the tool. Right, so let's go through the pen tool quickly. The pen tool with one finger, it will allow you to move the handle that you're currently on. Two fingers, it will allow you to move the, both of the handles at 45 degrees incrementals. And four fingers will allow you to reposition the point, like so. And then in the shapes, one finger will allow you to keep your, your scale, two fingers, your symmetry, three fingers, symmetry and scale, and four fingers, the same as with the pen tool, it will allow you to reposition. And then the last gestures that you need to know are happening here on the right. So within the color, if you look at the color pickers here, if you swipe up on them, you can get rid of the fill color and the stroke color. And then if you directly scrub up and down on the color picker here, it will change the brightness of the color of the shape selected. The stroke, Allow you, allows you to quickly change the stroke by sliding up and down. The text tool right here allows you to quickly change the text size by scrubbing up and down. The navigator also allows you to quickly zoom in and out by scrubbing up and down. And the history, and the history will allow you to quickly go back and forward by scrubbing up and down as well. Okay, so those are all the gestures that you need to know. Now they have the gestures, the tools, you know how to create your documents, your artboard, you know how the personas work, you're pretty much set up to go in and create your own art artwork. But before I go, I wanna leave you with a bonus number, number six, which is gonna be some quick exporting tips. So let's say you have your artboard here and you wanna quickly export this to send it for approval. What you can do is click on the file with the three dots here, click export, select your format, and then long press this. And then what you can do, you can go to your email, and drop it in and then the file will drop right in and you'll be ready to send off and then the last thing i want to show you it's an export template which i've put together to create seamless instagram carousels so let's take a vector brush here and go across our artboard and let's say i want to export this as a seamless 
Instagram carousel. But what you can do, obviously your artboard has to be 1080 by 1080 and then you multiply the width by how many slides you want to create for your carousel. The maximum is 10. I wanted to create nine for this one. And then I go to export and you can see I created individual slices, 1080 by 1080 slices that will export. So this is like where you don't want exported, like the page and the artboard and just keep your slices and then go export all. And then you can see the slices exported individually, ready to be posted to Instagram as a seamless carousel. Well, this is pretty much all I wanted to talk about. But before I go, please remember to go down below and like and subscribe for this video. And until next time, take care and let me know what you've created using the technique shown in this video. Okay, thanks a lot. Ciao.